And from 129, Rock of Ages, I do want to say I'm thankful that I'm saved this evening. Amen. Thank the Lord for saving me. I, I thank the Lord for using me in spite of myself. Amen. And I would like to ask y'all to pray for me. I've been trying to learn Spanish. Amen. And if you would, just pray for me that I can, I can learn it. I've tried to learn other languages in the past, and it didn't work out. You know, the Lord can allow that to happen. Amen. All right, 129, Rock of Ages, if you're able to stand. <coughs> Rock of Ages, left for me.
Thank you. 
you have your Bible, turn to the book of Habakkuk. I'll give you a little. It sure is. It's a blessing, isn't it? Sweet home of the happy and free. We started this morning singing Amazing Grace. And after we sang, we asked how many of you had somebody over in heaven, and that was a blessed time in Sunday school. And, and uh, what a blessing it is to think that heaven, to know that heaven is a real place. It's the reality for the saved, for the saints, our heavenly home. Amen. I'm glad for each of you here. Enjoyed the singing. Really, really enjoy the singing. Thankful for that. And thankful for the folks that are able to listen in on the live stream thing here. And uh, glad for those folks too. And we're just, we're just glad for the privilege to be able to minister the word of God. I know Jeremy talking about wanting to learn Spanish. That's, that's not so he can get rich or something speaking he wants to be able to witness to folks and preach to. that's what we need to do is be mindful of others to be able to communicate the gospel to people amen and get the good news out we're going to do here we're going to read here a little bit in the book of habakkuk and uh, i hate to disappoint you but in order to do this we're going to have to read the whole book the whole book of habakkuk it, I want to say this by way of commentary. This is a Travis Bradley commentary. With a name like Habakkuk, I get to heaven and find out that he didn't chew tobacco. I'm going to be mad at him. <laughs> this, this, this fella had to be, if any of the prophets was right with God and chewed tobacco, it had to be Habakkuk. Amen? Amen. My, my uncle, Junior, used to take his out and testify and then put it back in and keep on going. Amen? And... Uh, my Uncle Bob used to preach eating apples as a replacement for other stuff. Amen. <laughs> He'd eat an apple. But old Habakkuk, there's no, there is no prophet in the Old Testament. There's no prophet anywhere in the Bible like, like this man Habakkuk. Very little is known about him. Doesn't have to be a whole lot known about him. The main thing that we know about him is that he loved God in an incredible way. He loved righteousness. And he despised wickedness. And he wanted to see God work. You're going to see this as we read it. We're going to read it together. It won't hurt us to read it. He wanted to see God work, and he wanted God to clean house. He wanted his nation to be right with God. And he knew that the price had to be paid. we got a lot of people today that say they want revival, but at the same time, they want the president to come in and make the country great by means of material blessings, and they want to applaud some charismatic or some odd type of leader that stands up and you can't we can't have the blessings of God you understand as Christians we can't have God's blessing without repentance without getting right with God Amen. we can't continue down the road of wickedness it doesn't matter who the president is we can't continue and be wicked and ignore God and expect blessings we we need to be right with God and that's the kind of man that Habakkuk was he wanted the he wanted the nation to be right with God he wanted, he wanted to see righteousness, now, not self-righteousness, but genuine right, righteousness. And then whenever God revealed to him the means whereby he would bring about repentance in the nation, it grieved Habakkuk's heart. He was, it was difficult for him to imagine, to contemplate the suffering and the misery that would have to come to the nation in order to get them right. And at the same time, we pray for God to work. We're grieved when we think of what it's going to take to turn our nation. If our nation were to turn to God, what it would take to turn our nation to God. There, we're, we're, I'll say more about this later, but we're in the midst of a thing where people, literally people have gotten sick, people have died, but yet it's not made our nation closer to God. It just made us fight more over trivial things, nonsense things. And we ought to, as Christians, at least, as God's people, at least we ought to be on our face for God and say, God, help us. God, be with our sick, our, our, our ones that are afflicted. God, help them. But our nation, it just continues on divided, fighting over nonsense. But we're going to read the book here tonight, the book of Habakkuk. There's three chapters. We'll specifically look at chapter three, but we're just going to read one, two, and three. And uh, that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. The burden. 
You see that statement, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that rise up strife, that raise up strife and contention. And verse 4, he said, Therefore the law is slack, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, where, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. This is the answer of God to Habakkuk. He said, I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. And God answers Habakkuk in verse 6 and says, For lo, I will raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. This is God telling Habakkuk the answer to his prayer, what he's going to do about the wickedness. And once Habakkuk hears it, his heart is even more broken. He says, this nation shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be scorned unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change. This is speaking here, and he shall pass over and offend imputing this his power into his God. So verse 11 is a key. I'm only going to stop just to introduce key portions. God says, now I'm going to turn against them because I, I gave them the power to come into the nation. I raised them up and I brought them on my people for judgment. But then God says, then they make a mistake. They think that it's their God that gave them the victory. And so God says that verse number 12 he says, I'm going to deal with them. They'll impute their power unto their God. And then verse number 12, again, uh, Habakkuk is praying here. And he says, Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? This is Habakkuk's prayer. Look at his prayer. We shall not die. O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. And Almighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Thou art of pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue, when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he, and makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. They take up all of them with the angle, and they catch them in their net, and gather them in their drag. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they sacrifice unto their net, or their God, and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. Shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continuously to slay the nations? Habakkuk continues, and he says in chapter number 2, I will stand upon my watch. That's what we're to do as Christians. No matter what happens, whether in judgment or in peace, we're to stand on our watch. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. You see, when Habakkuk prayed, he was, say, he was giving God space to reprove him. He was saying, God, if I'm wrong in my prayer, correct me. He wasn't being uh, 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 offensive to God. So God answers him in verse number 2 of chapter 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. And by the way, that's what we're supposed to do is make the message plain. Amen? He said in verse number 3, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. He said, Habakkuk, this is the future. He said, But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. 
He's saying that there's an appointed time. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. You see that? That's God's word to us. The just shall live by his faith. No matter what happens, we're to live by faith. We're to trust in the living God. He says, yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. By the way, that's what you see when you have a thing called the United Nations or the New World Order, which is not a, which is not a, which is not a, 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 a rumor or not a possibility. It's a fact. All nations will come together under one sovereign, under the Antichrist. That's what he's talking about here. Habakkuk is reading the vision of the end time. He's the prophet of the ages. He's the prophet of the church. You say, you mean of the church age? No, the church from the time of Deuteronomy chapter 32. We'll see that in a minute. Until the time of Revelation chapter 22, Habakkuk is prophesying the vision of the church and what God will do. He says, he heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay, shall they not rise up suddenly? By the way, you can check that thick clay and you can find that vision of Daniel about that last kingdom held together by clay. And you'll see this to be true. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shalt be for booties unto them? You can check that out with the great whore and what God said in Revelation about the great whore and how they'll rise up and turn against them that made all nations drunken with their wine. He says, because thou hast spoiled many nations. You can find that you can compare that also with the book of Revelation. And because all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood. And for the violence of the land and of the, of the city and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house. That he may set his nest on high. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consorted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. Behold, it is not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. For the earth, look at what the Lord says here. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You see, the Lord's telling us here about what part the enemies of God are going to do and how, what victory they're going to have. But God's going to say the just shall live by faith. And don't miss these things. And then he says the earth shall be covered with, shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's not a possibility. That's a certainty. That's a promise of God. That's talking about the church and the mission of, of the saints of God. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. That puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land and of the city, and of all that dwell therein. What profiteth the graven image? The maker thereof hath graven it. The molten image, and the teacher of lies, the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake! To the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. Verse 20, here's another one of those highlight verses. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence. 
before him. What's he saying? God says, hey, God says, I'm just watching it all. I'm not moved. I'm right here where I've always been. I'm on my throne. I'm in the holy temple. And God says, whenever I say it, no, let everybody shut up. Let all the kings of the earth and all the enemies of God, just, just don't worry about it. God said, don't fret about it. The just shall live by faith. But God, what about the church? Are we going to get the mission accomplished? Hey, he said that uh, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge. You know, right now, listen, right now as I speak right here, uh, the, the atheist Zuckerberg came up a few years ago as a college kid with the idea of Facebook. And then a couple of other young Jewish boys came up with the idea of YouTube. And do you know that you can take and preach a message on Facebook or on YouTube and, and people that don't even believe in the Lord Jesus Christ on a platform that they built? Do you know the gospel can go out throughout the whole world and it costs nothing? Amen. Do you know that, that 40 years ago preachers used to spend ten, thousands and thousands of dollars a year to get out a little radio broadcast and today we can stand up and preach the gospel to the world and it costs nothing. Amen. Isn't that incredible? What's it, what is that? You think that's a coincidence? You think that's an accident? No, that's the providence of God. God saying, I win. Amen. Satan, you lose. Does that mean that the devil's not going to get any punches in? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Because surely God's going to allow him to. There are times whenever you and I, when the church, whenever as believers, we need to be shaken. And God allows the devil to rise up. But whenever he gets to thinking he's got it all figured out, God says, sit down, boy. I'm still in charge. The saints of God need not to fret, but simply to live. The just shall live by faith. And the reminder in chapter 2, verse 20, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Now I want you to see the last chapter. Chapter number 3 says, A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shigenoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. He said, he said, Lord, when I first heard what you said in chapter 1 and 2, he said, Lord, fearfulness took hold of me. He said, I was afraid. I was afraid, he said. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath. Remember mercy. He say in his prayer, Habakkuk is praying. He said, God, don't forget about us. And don't, don't you worry, God's not going to forget about you, amen? He hadn't forgotten about us, but he's saying, Habakkuk is saying, God, in, in wrath, remember mercy. He's saying, God, if it weren't for the mercies of the Lord, we'd be consumed. And, and lamentations, he said, thy mercies are new every day. And I'm thankful tonight for the mercy of God. You know, I used to sit in church as a little boy and listen to my dad testify. And I don't remember hardly any sermon that was ever preached growing up. And that's probably my fault. I remember I had just a handful. But I remember when my dad would testify as an old boilermaker. And hadn't gotten saved when he was almost 30 years old. And had lived a rough life. And lived in the world. And lived away from God. Didn't even know God. But he'd stand up during testimony time. And, and he loved that song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And he'd stand up and he'd say, I want to thank God for his grace. And he said, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd have to catch an elevator going up just to make it to hell. My dad used to say to me, he said, son, I've done things I wish I could undo. He said, I can't undo them. He said, I've said things, I've done things I can't undo. He said, but I'm so glad for God's grace and his mercy. Amen. I'm glad that I'll never get what I deserve. I deserve to go to hell and you deserve to go to hell. And we deserve to burn forever and ever. But because of God's grace and his mercy, Jesus went to the cross and he paid the sin debt for me and for you so that we don't have to suffer and endure what we ought to have. People in this world say, we want our rights. We want our rights. I remember people used to, when that first came out, my dad used to cringe when he'd hear that. He'd say, dear God, I don't want what I deserve. People would say, we just want what we deserve. I remember dad, would, that's the only time I ever seen him nervous. I think he thought, what if I, uh, the thought of saying that made him cringe. We don't want what we deserve. Amen. 
We need mercy. He said, in wrath, remember mercy, Lord. He said, revive thy work in the midst of the years. And I believe that tonight. I believe that if God's people fully trusted God, and he's not necessarily going to revive the nation, but he can revive his work. Amen. Hey, listen, I believe tonight that churches that love this book right here and saints of God that believe this book right here. Yeah, I believe that tonight that God can look down on a handful of saints that believe him and believe his word. And I believe God can say, you know what? I'm going to send revival to that group of people. I'm going to stir hearts and I'm going to use those people for my glory and honor's sake. And I believe there are situations like that all across our country. You don't read about it. You don't know about it necessarily. But trust me, you won't hear about it on the news. But there are places in our nation and throughout our world where God is reviving His Word. There is revival tonight. There are churches tonight that are preaching this book right here. And there are young people that are coming to church and hearing the gospel preached to them. And there are places where people are being saved. We ought to rejoice in that tonight. Don't listen. Don't despair about all the news all the time and all the nonsense of the world. Hey, the devil's not winning. And even if he's close, he's not going to win. Amen. Habakkuk said, Lord, remember mercy. And then Habakkuk goes to something that's really important in prayer. He starts reviewing, looking backwards. It's good to look backwards in prayer. When you, when you start to pray and you look back at how the record of the God to whom you're praying, it's going to embolden your prayer. Because I promise you this, not one time has our God ever failed. Not one time has he ever missed the mark. There's never been one time where God said, oh, oops, I guess I'll have to go to plan B. Everything that God's ever done always works out just like God said it's going to work out. Amen. You say, but man, the devil, he's, he's done this and he's done this. Every time the devil's ever thought he got the advantage, it turned out to be checkmate for him. Amen. He said this, he said, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. If you wanted to look at it tonight, you can turn over with me to Deuteronomy chapter number 33. In the beginning of the church, you'll see this, the church in the wilderness. Look at this, Deuteronomy chapter 33. No one hardly preaches this, but look at it. Deuteronomy 33. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them and shined forth from Mount Paran. And he came with 10,000 of saints. Now, one place you'll read their angels, but understand this. Those were saints. Those were saints at the time, at the time of the writing of the book of Deuteronomy, at the giving of the law, God already had a host of saints. Right. Amen. Amen. 10,000 of his saints. And I'll show, we'll, we'll, before we leave tonight, we'll see that in another place. He said, from his right hand went a fiery law for them. Amen. I'm glad for that fiery law of God, aren't you? Amen. Listen, yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. Aren't you glad tonight we preached about it? In John chapter 15, Jesus said, My words I give unto you. And how are you going to love me? You're going to keep my sayings. We have God's words. Amen. That's how we know God loves us. He gives us his word. Can you imagine a preacher standing up to preach and didn't believe he had the word of God? What a bunch of nonsense. Thank God for his word tonight. Habakkuk, he said this, he said in verse number four, and his brightness was as the light and he had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power before him. And I believe this simply means this, that he didn't show all of his power at one time. You ever heard someone said, don't show him your whole hand? That's an old card player's game. And listen, that, hey, he didn't let him know how powerful he was. He kind of played with him a little bit. He lured him in. And verse number five says, before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. Verse six says, he stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. What's he talking about? He's talking about when he led the church. When he led the children of Israel, when he led the redeemed of Egypt, the church, 
the saved of God, whenever he led them through the wilderness, he led them into the land of the enemies, the enemies of God. Now, they had opportunity to, to come to God. We saw that in those nations. You'll look, they had opportunity to come to God. But when he led them through the land, he said to them, this is your land. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This world doesn't belong to the devil. It belongs to God. And it belongs to you and I as God's people. Jesus said before he left, Occupy till I come. We are not to be on the retreat as God's people, but we are to be emboldened to people, emboldened ever going forward. Yes, there's meekness, but understand this too. This world belongs to God. That's why I don't understand churches bowing to the dictates of governments. Amen. We don't get asked permission from the government to come to church. God's already given us the command to come to church. Amen. I like what old preacher said. Uh, and uh, Brother Howes said years ago, he took a group of people over to a little area uh, near the church. They were soul winning. And the mayor and the town council called. They met on Monday and they called him and they said, listen. Some people from your church came into our area here knocking on doors. We can't have that. And he said, well, why not? And he said, it's against our ordinance. And he said, well, God told us to do it. And he said, well, you do it. We'll lock them up. He said, how big's your jail? Amen. He said, I'm going to send 300 people over there Saturday. You better make sure you got room for all of them. See, I ought not be that way. No, we all ought to be that way. Amen. No matter if you like the man or not, we ought to have that same attitude. We ought not be a bunch of whip pups with our tails between our legs, running from every little whim, worrying about what the government's going to do next or what this person's going to do next. Hey, we're God's children. Amen. We read in the Old Testament how God led them through the wilderness and how he watched over them and how he gave them victory after victory after victory. The only time they suffered defeat is when they didn't live by faith, when they didn't obey God, when they didn't believe God. It's a big deal to trust in him. We're his children. He said he measured the land. He's, God said, look, he said, it's yours. Possess it. He told Caleb, he said, everywhere your feet walk is yours. Can you imagine something like that? Amen. It's yours. Do you know that someday the saints are going to rule and reign? Do you know that someday in the millennial reign of Christ, we're going to rule and reign down here? Now, I'm excited about heaven, amen? But I'm looking forward whenever God's in charge and Jesus sits on the throne of, of, his, of David and he rules and reigns on this earth and he puts down all the wickedness, amen? It's a big deal. He said here, I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. And he prays, was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word. How did they go forward? They went by the word of God. God said, go. Do you know if God tells you to do something, the devil can't stop it? If God says something, if God gives a command, the devil can't stop it. Amen. We're only defeated so much as we refuse to trust the word of God, so much as we refuse to read the word of God and give allegiance to God. Whenever we give way to fear, we fail. But if we trust in the living God, we cannot fail. So many people say, well, I just, just can't have children in this day and time. What a bunch of nonsense. It's just too, world's just too bad. Well, brother, you go ahead and have a raise a family and teach them right. Yeah. You were, we read what he said, their, their hands, their, 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 their arrows, amen? They'll contest the enemy in the gate. I like that, amen? So you want your children to be mouthy? Yeah, I like them to be mouthy for the Lord, amen? amen. I want them to stand up against wrong. I want them to speak out against it. There's an appropriate time, but I want them to be bold for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He said here, verse number 10, the mountains saw thee. Look at this. This is talking about, this is, this is his prayer. He said, the mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation at the light. Of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. What's he saying? That even the sun and the moon ceased to move when God said stop. Amen. 
Jesus stepped out on the ship. He fallen, went to sleep. He didn't fall asleep. He went to sleep. Amen. I don't like to fall asleep. I like to go to sleep. And he went to sleep. And his disciples came, woke him up. He said, Pastor, don't you care that we perish? And that storm was raging. He stepped out on the ship and he said, peace, be still. And they said, what manner of man is this? And even the wind and the sea obey him. That's our Savior. That's the one you pray to. That's the one that you say came into your heart when you ask him to save you. That's the one that lives. God, help us not to be a defeated people. Habakkuk is praying here. He said, The sun and moon stood still. He said, verse 12, Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Man, look at that verse. Amen. I like that. That's hillbilly talk right there. That, don't tell me that. Amen. And he spit a big wad of tobacco juice out when he said that right there. They threshed them in anger. Amen. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Can I tell you that this is talking about Jesus? Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation with thine anointed. Who's the anointed one of God? That's Jesus. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. What did the, what did the Lord promise Eve that the, Satan, the, the serpent would wound her heel, but her seed would wound his head? The Bible says over here in the book of Revelation, if I find it for you here, if I've got it marked here, and uh, in the book of Revelation, and for some reason I didn't mark it, man, oh man, anyway, uh, but we know that that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to wound his enemies. And that's what he's talking about here. Look what it says. It says, uh, by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Now look at verse 14. Thou didst strike through with the, his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. The rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Now he's talking about the enemies of God here. We're, we're toward, toward the end, so pay attention. He says, Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. He's saying here that the battle is intensifying. The enemies of God are feeling the pressure and they're getting angry. And they're trying to devour the people. They're trying to destroy the people. Listen, we, we have people today that say, man, we're at the end of the church age. And, and we're in the Laodicean church age. And we're just about whipped. And we ain't got no power. And all of our churches are shutting down. And if you listen to the average preacher, you think we may as well fold up our tents and go home. We're not nearer defeat. We're nearer victory than we've ever been. God help those fellows that stand up. Somebody ought to kick them in the rear end and hit them right in the head with a good old Bible slap. Amen. And say, wake up, man. Hey, our Redeemer draweth nigh. God help us not to stand in the pulpits and preach a, vict a, a message of defeat whenever we're more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. Man, when we watch when the boys fight there, man, nobody stands up and say, all right, roll over now. All right, buckle now. All right, put your arms down, fellas. Close your eyes. No. You're waiting for them to get a little advantage. You're watching to see an advantage to their enemy. You're watching to their, 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 content, their enemy. I like that word better. Their opponent. I mean, you're looking for opportunity. And you say, now you got him. Go, get him. Go on that boy. Ride him. Don't let up on him. That ought to be the attitude of God's people. Listen, as God's people, we ought to encourage the brother. And I'm so sick and tired of Christians that can't encourage one another. I'm weary of preachers that it can't encourage one another, jealous of each other, and upset about somebody else being blessed of God. Listen, if someone's being blessed in Florida or Illinois or California, if that's even possible, or even Maine or Massachusetts or wherever, wherever God chooses to do a work, I want to rejoice in the work of God. I thank God tonight that, yeah, we're living in the 21st century, the year 2021. The devil thinks he's got us whipped. 
And we've watched it now, and, and we've tried not to be brought down and, and brought into the mire, and we've watched the world roll and fight and wrestle around. What are we going to do about the virus? What are we going to do about the virus? And, and how are we going to survive? And we as God's people, thankfully, here in this church, and I know a few places where we haven't folded up the tent, we haven't given up, but we've kept pressing on. Yeah, people quit, but God ain't quit. We're just going to keep on. Amen. We're not going to quit. Look what he said. Thou didst devour the poor secretly, meaning that through subtlety you got some. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses through the heap of great waters. Now notice what he said. When I heard, my belly trembled. He said it bothered me. He said, when I first heard God's plan, it bothered me. He said, my lips quivered at the voice. He said, rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I was hoping I, he said, I'm hoping I could avoid it. You know, a lot of saints hope they can avoid the day of trouble, even if it means inventing something that ain't true. But God didn't save us from the trouble and save us from the tribulation. He saves us in the trouble, in the tribulation. Habakkuk saying, I was hoping that I could miss it. That I might rest in the day of trouble. But then he says this, when he cometh, who's coming? That's Jesus. When he cometh, up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. You see that? He will invade them with his troops. You know, God's not welcome in this world. Jesus is not welcome. He's an outcast. When he comes back, he's coming back with a conquering army. As an outcast. With his troops. I want to show it to you. Take your Bible, turn with me to the book of Jude, if you would. Turn to the book of Jude. See, I don't know if them Old Testament saints knew about the tribulation and about the end of times and all that stuff. Well, would you believe me if I told you Enoch knew? You know that I've not preached anything here tonight that Enoch didn't already know? Jude, chapter number 14, chapter, chapter 1, verse number 14. You'll get old one day. And Enoch also, the what? Yep. Seventh from Adam. You know why God put that in there? Because he wanted you to know he's real close to the beginning. The seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh. See, this is why I'm not worried about missing out. I'm not looking for a way out. I'm looking for Jesus. No matter what the devil throws at us, we're just going to keep on going for the Lord. Amen. He said, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Now, the seventh from Adam, Enoch, is going to elaborate a little bit. To execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. I like his preaching. Amen. And of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Man, that's the world we live in. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you there should be mockers in the last time who 
should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, now notice this, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your what? Most holy faith. It means building up yourself, standing on your faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy and wrath. Remember mercy. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. We're not going to walk into heaven with our heads down. We're not going to walk into heaven as a defeated bunch. We're going to walk into heaven shouting the glory of God because we'll have just seen Jesus whoop the devil down here. And he's going to whoop the devil out of the devil. Amen. Amen. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Now let's finish. Now let's finish Habakkuk's prayer. And here's the verse 17. Habakkuk said, although the fig tree shall not blossom. This is bad. It's bad when the fig trees don't blossom. There might be some hunger. You know, there might be some lean years, but you know you can survive on baloney and bread if you have to. Some of you better learn. You just may go ahead and settle it now. You might have to, you might have to miss a meal or two. The fig tree might not blossom. You, th you say, I just want things to get better. They will when you get to heaven. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Well, if the gas prices just go down and I could go on my vacation, you know, gas prices might just go up and up. It might get harder down here. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. There shall be no herd in the stalls. He's saying... Habakkuk said, even though there's going to be some lean years. <laughs> Verse 18, he said, yet. What do you do with a fellow like this? Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. What did, what did Enoch say? Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Now let me say this and I'm done. Uh, of all the people that any one of us in this room have known, we've probably not known anyone who struggled and endured as much difficulty in life as little Luke. He didn't walk to his four and a half years old. He didn't eat until he was almost two years old. Had all kinds of problems. Had open heart surgery when he was two months and two days old. Didn't weigh 10 pounds. Weighed 8.7 pounds. Tiny as could be. Never spoke a word. Just made noise and he knew people. But you know why we miss him? Because he was the perfect picture of joy. An overcomer. Not defeated, not whipped. They did surgery here uh, on his stomach. They had to do some work on the inside there. And put holes in here. Now I had hernia surgery once. And I, was, I, I whined for three weeks. Got out of bed. Couldn't get back in bed. I decided to lay down beside the bed. I mean I got halfway up. I was either halfway up or halfway down. I promise you, they did the same thing to that little boy, three or four holes in here. He, he took one Tylenol. The next day, he was up scooting around the house. Now, I don't know if he just didn't feel pain or just didn't care. Or he just too excited to live. 
He said there, he said, I'll make my feet like hind's feet. That's like a goat. Habakkuk said, don't matter how bad the world gets, no matter how much adversity is, he said, I know a way to get away from it. I'm just going to keep going higher and higher and higher. My most holy faith. The Lord said it in his holy temple. You know what we do in the midst of troubles, in the midst of hardships? Just get closer and closer and closer to God. You know what happened to Enoch? One day he took a walk. He did it every day. He loved, Enoch walked with God. One day he took a walk, the old preacher said, and he got out there. And God said to Enoch, he said, you know, you've been, you walked a long way with me today. And Enoch said, God, I, I don't like this world much. And God said, I don't blame you, Enoch. It ain't much to like right now. And Enoch said, I guess I ought to go home now. And God said, well, you're closer to my house than yours. Why don't you just come on home with me? And the Bible said Enoch was not, for God took him. You know, he didn't have a funeral. God just one day took him home. You know, someday God's just going to take us home. But don't despair if we have to endure some difficulty. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. The just shall live by faith. Looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he knows every trial we'll face. And he knows the way through the storm. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. When I was a little boy, I walked all over the hills. Matt, you know the same. We walked all over the hills with our dad. I had no idea where I was. But I didn't know where I was. I was walking behind my dad. The only thing he taught me was to look up while I walked because he let them sticks come back and whack me in the head to teach me to pay attention. I still got brain damage from it. But I didn't, I didn't care where we was going. I didn't ask. I just got behind him and walked along. And wherever we came out is where we was when we got done. I don't know where all the Lord's going to lead us in this life, but I know one thing. We just better follow him. All the way, my Savior leads me. Amen. Brother Jeremy said to get you a song and sing it. Get you some Bible verses and believe them. Get to know God. He walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And when all this is over, we'll go to dwell with him on high. Where he has a place prepared for us. A new heaven and a new earth. A new body. We're in dwelt righteousness. No more sin. No more pain. No more suffering. No more heartache. What a day that'll be. I'll just share this with you, and I'm done. I should go ahead and close, but the Bible says that uh, when they went to the tomb of Jesus, there one place it says an angel met them, and the other place it says a young man met them. And I believe God's saying that because he's interchanging an me angel, a messenger, and one of the heavenly. I, I believe that young man was someone from heaven that came to earth to announce that. One day I had a dream, and I went to heaven. And a young man walked up to me, shook his hand out and spoke to me, introduced, he said, you know who I am? And first I didn't know, he said, I'm Luke, welcome. I didn't recognize him at first, but once he introduced himself, I knew who it was. Never heard him speak here, but I'll hear him there. And, and people say, He'll be perfect then. It's hard for me to, because, man, to me, he was perfect here, you know. But I know what they mean, that he will be perfect there. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Just keep pressing on, saints of God. Habakkuk saw it. God showed it to him. We win. The just shall live by faith. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for your grace and your goodness. Thank you for your blessings now, Lord. I pray, God, you'd help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our heads bowed and eyes closed. Do you know the Lord? Young people, can I just tell you tonight?